some y'all. I'm just letting my alert group know that I am live on Facebook right now. Okay, somebody's already here. Awesome. Whoever that is watching live, thank you. It's my sister. Okay, so just letting my groups know that I'm here. Because we're going to start right on time, right at 2.30, and jump right into this week's prophetic word. Sister, and I had to let everybody know that I'm live now before we jump in. All right, got a very interesting and powerful <clears throat> prophetic word today. So you already see it in the title. I'm going to put it on the screen in a minute. We're going to give people a few more minutes to come on. I guess I need to turn my phone alerts off. <laughs> put the phone on silent. Oh, man. You can the price die too. Oh, so it's just.
Okay, it keeps going in and out. Uh, so hopefully you can see me now. Hopefully you can see me and hear me now. Okay. Okay, uh, I'm going to go ahead. Okay. How about now? Am I back? I can, I'm seeing the screen. See me now. Okay. Yeah, I'm seeing the screen now. So, okay. All right, so here we go. We're going to say a word of prayer and we're going we're gonna to dive in. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord, for another day. Thank you, Lord, uh, for the cold, the heat, the wind, the rain, the sun, the snow, the nighttime. It all comes from you. Thank you, God, for letting us survive 2020 and be here to have another day. Praise your name, Lord. I should Forgive me of any sin, Lord. Wash me clean and fill me with the Holy Ghost, O God, and breathe through me, speak through me, O God. I must decrease, decrease so you can increase. And let whatever said be what you want, said Lord, because it doesn't matter what I say. I don't have anything to say. We want to hear from you, O God. You're the one that has the words of life. So breathe through me, speak through me, use me, O God. And let what is said today be what you want to be said to the honor and glory of your name, that you might be glor <clears throat> glorified. <clears throat> And that the saints might be edified and that the demons might be terrified. And we thank you for it. And we believe you for it. We're expecting great things and signs and wonders and miracles shall follow all those that uh, believe and receive this word. In Jesus' name, we declare it and we pray. Amen. All right. <clears throat> amen. Amen. All right. Great. Back. Okay. Today's live prophetic word is time to collect. Let me put that on the screen. Time to collect. You know, you may say that sounds funny. Maybe it does, but that's what the Holy Ghost gave me. So that's what I'm going to talk about. Today's live prophetic word is time to collect. Okay, I should be on the screen now. So we're going to look at at least two scriptures. First scripture we're going to look at <clears throat> is Deuteronomy 11 and 14. Now, let me put that on the screen. Uh, I'm going to at least put it in the chat. I should probably put, put it on the screen, too. So uh, that's in the chat. I'm going to put it on the screen. Deuteronomy 11 and 14, okay? The book of Deuteronomy, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Leviticus Numbers, and Deuteronomy. It's the fifth book in the Old Testament, fifth book starting from the top of the Bible, fifth book of Moses. Deuteronomy, sometimes hard to spell. That's why I put it on the screen. Deuteronomy chapter 11 and verse 14. Okay, I'm going to read a couple different versions. King James Bible. That I will give you the rain of your land in his due season, the first rain and the latter rain, that thou mayest gather in thy corn and thy wine and thine oil. NIV, New International Version. Then I will send rain on your land in its season, both autumn and spring rains, so that you may gather in your grain new wine and olive oil. New Living Translation. Then he will send the rains in their proper seasons, the early and late rains, so you can bring in your harvests of grain, new wine, and olive oil. Berean Study Bible. Then I will provide rain for your land in season, the autumn and spring rains, that you may gather your grain, new wine, and oil. Okay, so what does that have to do with it being time to collect? Okay, I'll tell you what that means in a general sense, and what that means in terms of the principle that we can apply for today is, and hear me when I say this, because you hear me talk about all the time the difference between religious myth and what the scripture actually says. Religious myth and what the scripture actually says misinformation, bad teaching, bad theology, and what the scripture actually says. And what the scripture just told you is that first of all, God is gonna pro provide rain for your land in its season. Now, you have to learn how to discern the seasons because just like in the natural, we have winter, spring, summer, and fall, that's corresponding in the spirit. What do I mean by that? Sometimes spiritually, it's a time to plant. Sometimes spiritually before you plant, you have to, in the natural, you have to prepare soil. If you don't know anything about gardening or farming, 
there's an old phrase old school black people used to use called fallow ground. What that phrase means is it's talking about dirt that's dry and it has that light gray brownish color and it's crumbly because fallow ground is dirt that you can't really plant any seeds in because there's no nutrients in it. It's dried up. You can't get anything to grow in it. And so sometimes you have to scoop out that dirt when you're de dealing with gardening. OK, the same thing is true with the spirit. Sometimes there's things in your heart and your soul that are dry and crusty and old and stale and broken. That's why the Lord said you can't put new wine in old wineskins. That's what that means. So sometimes you're going to have seasons where God is scooping out some things from your heart and your soul. He's healing you of some things that you have been carrying or some things that are not going to help you bear the fruit that you're supposed to bear. Now, I remember because I've talked to my son about it. I remember back, uh, well, maybe over 20 years ago, I noticed something. I noticed that there's a lot of ministers where every time they stood up, they said, it's harvest time. God said it's harvest time. God said it's harvest time. And after a while, I'm saying to myself, <laughs> it can't be harvest time all the time because it doesn't work that way in the natural. In the natural, we got winter, spring, summer, and fall. And then in, in the natural, you have to plant in one season and then wait for the rain to come because if the rain don't bless your planting, but also you got to plant in rich soil. So if you know anything about gardening or farming, you have to get black fertile soil, that soil that's black and soft to the touch. So it has the nutrients in it. It's still soft. And it's a place where the seed can go and nestle and die and take root so it can uh, sprout up into the thing it's supposed to become. OK, so when you hear people sing those old school songs about breaking up that fallow ground, that's what that means. So you will go through seasons sometimes where God is not giving you stuff, but scooping stuff out of you, scooping stuff out of your heart and your soul, because it's not going to help you be productive. You understand? So you can't be listening to these people that saying every season is harvest season. That uh, mm -mm. OK, so sometimes it's time to scoop out and then sometimes it's time to plant. Ain't no need of you planting if the soil ain't rich, but when you've done that work, then you plant the seeds into rich soil. But after you plant the seed, then the rain has to come because if there's no rain on your seeds and your soil, the seeds and the soil can't do the work by themselves. They need moisture, they need the rain. Also, you need fertilizer, okay? Because sometimes you gotta fertilize that area to help it grow. And then you need time and then you need sunlight. Now, can you see in the natural how there's seasons where you do certain things so you can get the harvest that you want? It's the same way in the spirit. So that's why the scripture says that I will provide rain for your land in season. So sometimes, hear me carefully, sometimes we're asking God for rain and it's not time for rain. You keep asking, Lord, see, because Lord have mercy, we love to sing about harvest. And we love to sing about the rain and the overflow. If there's anything and the double portion, <laughs> all these Christian phrases, and they're not wrong and they're not bad because they're biblical. But I'm saying you've got to keep it in balance based on what the scripture actually says. And <clears throat> it's not time for rain all the time in the natural. So sometimes you're asking God for rain. Sometimes you're asking God for overflow. Sometimes you're asking God for abundance. Sometimes you're asking God to do all that. But it's not the season for that. It's the season for God to scoop some stuff out and get some good dirt in and then get some good seeds in. Then he's got something to send the rain on. What does that mean in a practical sense? I'll tell you what it means. What good would it do the Lord to bless you with rain and increase if your heart and your soul ain't right, if your mind ain't right, I'm going to ask you that one more time. What good would it do the Lord to bless you with rain and increase if your heart and your soul and your mind isn't right? What do you mean by that, Prophet Taylor? I mean, let's say you're asking God for a relationship. I'll stop by to tell you, if you don't let God have the season where he heals you and scoops out of your heart those things that aren't right, Sometimes that's damage from other relationships. Sometimes it's damage from your childhood. Sometimes it's stuff that just comes with living. 
Because one of the things that can happen when you live is you can try and try and try and try and then just get tired. You just get tired of trying. Because you can't just keep racking up L's. Sometimes you got to rack up W's. You got to win sometimes. That's what keeps your heart encouraged. Okay, my son said. Uh, my son said something was no good. Did you mean the picture's no good, or you mean it? Or you you echoing what I'm saying is not going to do God no good? Okay, I'm gonna assume you meant that. Okay, so so um so it's not going to do God any good. It's not going to do you any good because sometimes people pray and pray and pray and pray and pray and pray and pray about relationships. You keep asking God to send you somebody, but if you are still angry from your childhood or if you are still damaged from living, or if you're still mad at the last person and you haven't forgiven, uh, then that heart and that soul is not ready for a relationship. That heart and that soul is not ready. How many people have jumped into relationships and you weren't ready, or you got into a relationship with the wrong person? Do you know why? Because I've met some people who just can't be single. I mean, they can't be single. I mean, they can't be single. They just... They just got to have somebody all the time. And when you're like that, you never give yourself a chance to heal. Do you know what that means? What that means is that when you go into your new relationship, you're still taking all the mistakes you made from the last one. You didn't take the time to heal. You didn't take the time to reflect. You didn't take the time to let God heal you. You didn't go to counseling. You didn't talk to your friends. Sometimes you need to talk to your friends. Sometimes you need to talk to people that know you the best. Sometimes you need to talk to your siblings because your siblings know you in a way that no one will ever know you, okay? But whatever it is, you've got to work through that stuff you carry in before you get to the new one. Otherwise, you know what you're going to do? You're going to get in that new relationship and you're going to go off. And you're going to blame that person for all what mom and them didn't do. Or you're going to blame that person for all what your last boyfriend or girlfriend or husband or wife didn't do. And that's not going to do you any good because then you're going to chase them away. You spent all that time praying and asking God to send you somebody. And then when they came, you so mad, you chased them away. That's why every season is not rain. Because some seasons we got to spend some time scooping out that hurt and that pain and that disappointment. Okay. And remember, hurt, pain, and disappointment is not wrong. It, it's just, it just comes from living. It doesn't make you wrong. It doesn't make you a bad person. It's damage we sustain from living. Remember that happens in nature too. All you ever have to do is look at trees, look at the bark of trees. And when you cut into a tree, you can look at the rings. The older a tree is, it has a ring for every season. It's lived on earth. And, and there are marks in that tree for the kind of season it went through, if it was extraordinarily cold or dry or whatever it was. Our souls are the same way. So that's why you can't be listening to these people who tell you that God gonna send the rain all the time. Cause I just read it for you. That's not actually what the Bible says. The Bible says he's gonna send the rain to your land in its season. You understand that? Because if you're in a season where you gotta scoop out, you gotta uproot. Uh, sometimes, if again, if you know anything about gardening, sometimes there's rocks in the garden. Rocks are not good or bad, but rocks don't help you grow anything. Rocks got to go, the weeds have to go, okay? A weed is something that can nestle down in your dirt and it produces thorns and thistles and weeds don't produce anything good. That's why you have to pretty much pull them out by the root and then you have to get some type of weed repellent, weed killer, because they don't add anything good. So for example, if you want a, uh, an example of what that looks like in the spirit or in the solar realm, it's like bitterness. Bitterness is like a weed for your heart because bitterness literally doesn't add anything good to your life. I want you to tell me one good thing you get by being bitter. Just one. <laughs> There's nothing. There's not one thing that you profit from by being bitter. So bitter is a weed. Bitterness is a weed. So that's got to come out. Okay? Because there's no way love is going to be able to come through a bitter heart. It's not possible. Okay? So the scripture tells us that God says, then I will provide rain for your land in season. And some of y'all listen to me right now have been struggling and you've been struggling in your relationship with God because you kept asking for rain. And God was like, 
I hear you, but it's not time for that right now. What it's time for right now is for me to get you to the next thing. I'll give you another good example. Uh, one of the best examples I can give you is uh, money. What do you mean by that? Sometimes we pray and 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 confess and believe for money, and we should, because we're supposed to have finances. But what good is it going to do the Lord to drop a whole bunch of money on you and you don't know what to do with money? You never grew financially. Uh, what does that look like in real life? Most people that win the lottery, most people that get a windfall like that don't know what to do with it. You know why? Because you got to grow in here and you got to grow in here. You have to change on the inside to be, handle, be able to handle large amounts of money. And the biblical principle is faithful and little, faithful and much. So you got to learn how to be faithful with what you have so you can handle it on the next level. But if you are used to making $30,000 and you think $30,000 and then somebody gave you $30 million, I stopped by to tell you that $30 million is going to come down to that $30,000 in less than six months. You know why? Because you think $30,000. You don't know how to think on the multi-million dollar level because when you're on a multi-million dollar level, you have to think differently. You have to make different kinds of decisions. You have to put way more time in managing your money or you have to hire somebody that knows what they're doing. And different options are open to you. It's just different. Like I was watching how LeBron James uh, invested in some company. It wasn't GameStop, it wasn't that whole thing. He invested in some company a couple of years back. And then that company blew up and LeBron made like $410 million in a day, okay? If you're at a level where you can make an investment and that investment gives you a return of like 410 million a day, in a day you have to know what to do with that. And most people, not everybody, most people that hit the lottery, that all of a sudden get a whole bunch of money at once, have no idea what to do with it. Uh, for example, a lot of people don't know that if you take lottery winnings, no, I don't play the lottery. If you take lottery winnings in a lump sum, it's a reduced amount, but that's not the taxes. So in other words, once you get past Blaze Pizza, yes, my son, that's right, Blaze Pizza. That's right, my son's on top of it. And um, it's not the taxes. So if they told you you want 100 million and they give you a reduced amount because you took it a lump sum of 79 million, that's not taxes. You gotta pay half that money in taxes. So it's not really 80 million, it's really closer to 40 million. A lot of people don't know that. Uh, if you recall, that's what way back in the 80s, that's what happened to MC Hammer. If you don't know anything about Hammer's story, uh, they gave Hammer a $14 million advance after he can't touch this. And uh, when he dropped the next CD and when he had on Too Legit to Quit, that wasn't nearly as big of a hit as You Can't Touch This, but they gave him a $14 million advance based on You Can't Touch This. And he bought like a $10 million mansion. If somebody gives you $14 million, that's really $7 million. Because half of that belonged to the government, federal, state, and local. That's what I mean. A lot of people don't even know what I'm talking about. So if somebody gave you $100 million a mile, that's $50 million. That's not $100 million. But if you spend like $75 million, you're already in the hole. See what I mean? Because you got to change this and you got to change this. So if God drops a lot of money on you, it's not going to produce anything but more trouble if you don't know what to do with a whole bunch of money. So, so, <laughs> so sometimes what the Lord is doing is getting you ready. That's why the Bible says, I'm going to give you the rain in the season. In the season. I'm going to send a person in your life in the season. Okay? And I know that's difficult because sometimes we're not able to discern the seasons. And if you've had bad religious teaching where somebody's telling you all the time, God says it's harvest time. God is not saying it's harvest time all the time because that's not what the scripture said. Remember that the scripture is always the more sure word of prophecy. If you get confused or if you're not sure about anything or whatever, God is not the author of confusion. So you can always search the scriptures. That's why God gave us a Bible, okay? You can search the scriptures and see what the Lord has to say about something because God will always do exactly what he said. So no matter how people might be popping off at the mouth, <laughs> you can find a scripture and you can stand on that, okay? So then I will provide rain for your land in season. And then the Bible says the autumn and the spring rains. What's the difference between autumn and spring rains? Okay. Well, just to be summative, autumn or fall is when the warm weather is about to close out. So it's going to be like the last rain 
for that warm season and then everything going to get cold. Spring rain is when the earth is blooming again and waking up and stuff is growing and, you know, birds are coming back and everything's coming back out. That's spring rain. So the scripture says, I'll give you the rain that's closing out a season, closing out a season of heat. And then I'll give you a rain that's opening up a new season, autumn and spring rain. Can you see those are two different kinds of rain and they do two different kinds of things? Um, Sometimes we're coming to an end of a season and God has given us autumn rain. In other words, God is closing out that season and you're not going to go back. That season is over. How do you know that's true? Um, Because remember, I always like to teach practically because when I was coming up, I got so tired of people spouting off all these platitudes and all these principles and the Lord will make a way and just wait on him and all that. I'm like, but they didn't tell me anything. What am I supposed to do? So that's why I preach and teach the way I do if you didn't know that. So if you want to know what autumn rain looks like, autumn rain looks like when somebody that's been in your life for a while all of a sudden is gone. (laughs) Especially if they've been in your life a long time. Okay, if you're dealing with somebody that's been Where's that scripture? Uh, It's uh, Sister Vanita. It is right on the screen, the Deuteronomy 11 and 14. I'll type it again, but it's right on the screen. It's right underneath, if you can see me, uh, right on the screen, it's right underneath uh, my picture on the screen. But I put it in the chat too, Sister Vanita, so you can see it. Right, Deuteronomy 11, 14. Right, so if somebody's been in your life a while and then they're gone, that's the end of a season. If you have a funeral, if you lose a, you lose a loved one, uh, oh, no problem. No problem, says being no problem. You lose a loved one, you're going to cry a lot. Crying is a form of rain because it's tears in your soul, if you didn't know that. Your deepest emotions always come with tears. There's your surface emotions that you carry up here. Those are the ones you don't mind people seeing, but your deepest, deepest emotions are down in your gut. The Bible calls it your reins in English. In Hebrew, it's closer to kidneys. So it's God is talking about how you feel way down in your sub-basement, the way you really feel. Whenever you talk about your deepest emotions, they always come with tears because they come with cleansing and rain. Okay? And so that's why when you bury someone, you cry a lot. You need to cry. Why? Because you need to mourn. You need to mourn that loss. Even if you know they say, even if you know they're rejoicing in God with heaven, God will give you a vision of that person safe in heaven so you don't lose your mind. Yes, he will. God will, through the Holy Spirit, let you know that your loved one is safe with him in the glory realm, but you still miss them on earth. And so autumn rain is when I have to cleanse because my my loved one is gone. And I can't tell you how many times after my father died, I picked up the phone. And I was seven digits in. This was before we had smartphones and you actually had to dial a number. I was dialing my father's number. I'm on the seven digit. I'm like, oh yeah, because I forgot he was gone. Because I was calling about a football game or something. It took me a while because you got to process. See, that's autumn rain. That's closing out a season. Or if somebody has been in your life a long time, ain't there anymore for a variety of reasons. You know why that happened? I'll tell you why that happened. Because where you're going next is someplace that they can't fit or they ain't supposed to be or where it wasn't going to work out or they was going to leave anyway. I know it's rough when you lose someone, if you were involved with them emotionally, if it was like a romantic relationship or it was like a deep friendship, that's rough when you lose people like that. That is not easy. But I stopped by to tell you, sometimes then people couldn't handle who you're about to be. I know for a fact that there are some people that were in my life in years past that couldn't handle who I am now. No joke. Didn't believe in a prophetic, didn't believe in tongues, didn't believe in a lot of things. And so there's some people that are going to only go so far for that season. And then you're going to get some autumn rain where it's going to be some tears. But it's closing that out because they can't handle what's going on next. You know why I say that? Let me tell you why I say that. This is going to be rough to hear. It's because there are some people 
that are going to try to sabotage <laughs> where God is taking you next. Some people that you think you like this with, some people that, that you think you ride or die with, some people that you think got your back no matter what, once they see the next thing God turns you into, they're going to try and sabotage it. I know, I know that's hard to hear, and I know that's hard to believe, but it's the truth. Everybody can't go every place you're going. You understand that? That happened in King David's life over and over and over again. So when you're making the transition to the next thing, sometimes God got to send that autumn rain and you got to wash them people out of your life. Because on a scale of one to 10, if y'all have been threes for a long time, then God lifts you up to a five. If they still had a three, they might get jealous and try to sabotage. Mm -hmm. I give another practical example of what that looks like. Uh, let me tell you this before I give you the, the example. Let me tell you this. You can't outsmart God. You can't outsmart the maker. Does it say that in the Bible? Yes. It says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. The Bible does not say God should not be mocked because that would mean you could mock God and it's something you shouldn't do. The Bible says God is not mocked. That means it's impossible to mock God. It's It can't happen because as you sow, so you reap. So let me give an example of what that looks like. Whenever you've got somebody in your life that's clearing out other people, when they're making a point to push other people away from you, then people's only in your life for a season. They think they're going to separate you from your friends and they think they're going to separate you from your family and they think they're going to move themselves in to your space by pushing other people back and doing all this manipulation and stuff. And they think that you can't see that. That's how you know people that aren't prophetic because people that aren't prophetic don't have that kind of relationship with the Holy Ghost because they don't know that the Holy Ghost will tell you. The Holy Ghost will open your eyes and show you. Didn't every time Jesus met one of his 12, didn't Jesus say something to them like, I already knew you before I met you. I already saw you underneath the tree. He told Peter, you know, what it's going to be like when he was old. He told Peter when he was going to betray him. He told Judas he was going to betray him. So the Lord kept telling his 12, I already know y'all. <laughs> Before I met y'all in the natural, I already saw you in the spirit. I already know y'all, and I already know what you're going to do. Because the Holy Ghost will tell you prophetically who somebody is. But people that are, they're not prophetic, they pathetic. <laughs> people, they're not, you know, <laughs> they're not prophesying, they're prophet lying. Them people is only going to be around for a while because they think that can fool the Holy Ghost and they think they're going to manipulate all this stuff around you and somehow the Holy Ghost don't see that. That's how you know they don't know the spirit of God on that level. Okay? That's why God got to send some rain, autumn rain, to wash them for them for it's like your season is over. Your season is over. I remember my son is here in this chat. My son will tell you. Uh, when we had graduation days, uh, I saw a door close in the spirit and God was like, boom, I saw the Lord close the door in the spirit like I'm looking at this camera. And God was like, okay, that's over. And we both knew it in our spirits. Like, okay, that's, we ain't got to deal with that no more. That's over. You see what I mean? So, okay, so autumn rain and spring rain. Spring rain means something about to spring forth. I stopped by to tell you, people think it's spring all the time. It ain't spring all the time. But sometimes it is spring, which is what I'm going to get to in a minute. I'm, I'm getting to my title. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'm not off track. But it's not spring all the time, but sometimes it is spring. And when it's spring, it's time for the new growth. Isn't that what we experience? I don't know where y'all are, but I'm in Chicago. And Chicago has been snowing all week and it has been freezing. It's freezing today. It's like minus three, minus five. Snowing and freezing. Snowing and freezing. Because that's what it does in winter in Chicago. That's not news to anybody from Chi-Town. Okay? But it'll be March and April soon. And... The, the leaves on the tree will be green again. Birds will be back. Cicadas will be back. Everybody back in the spring. See that? It's not spring all the time. It's not spring all the time. And so when you listen to bad teaching, you get that wrong idea in your head. It ain't spring all the time. Okay. Autumn and spring rain. So God, when God is ready for something to spring forth, something new in your life, he's going to send a rain. And the spring rain leads to the next part of the verse, which says that you may gather your grain 
your new wine and your oil. Oh my goodness. So God says that I'm sending some rain to close out one season, the autumn rain, that I'm gonna send the spring rain to spring forth the new season. But God says that you may gather, and that's the title of the prophetic word, that for some people, listen to me right now, might not be for everybody, but somebody listen to me right now, it's time to collect. <laughs> it's time for the spring rain. Why? Because it's time for you to gather. Gather what your grain, what does grain represent? Grain represents seed and sustenance. When you gather grain, it's more stuff you can plant to make more grain, but it's also sustenance from which you can make bread and other products to eat <laughs> and take care of you. But then it says new wine. New wine, wine and oil are always signs of luxury, prosperity and fruitfulness. And oil in particular is not just a sign of riches and fatness because some of the translations say olive oil and olive oil has a lot of the good fat, the good uh, mono uh, unsaturated fat, the good fat, okay? The fat that's good for you, that helps clean out your cholesterol. That's why olives are so good for you. But also oil is always a sign of the Holy Ghost. So what that means is new revelations, new tongues, new prayers, new songs, new books, you know, new vision. That's what that means. So God said, you can gather that. You can gather your sustenance and your seed. You can gather your luxury and your pleasure. You can gather your revelations, your fatness and your increase. And for somebody looking at me right now, it is time to collect. It is, I don't know who that word is for, but it's what the Holy Ghost told me to release. That's why I'm releasing it. It's time to collect, okay? It's spring rain time. So why is that important? Here's why. Don't be surprised by the spring rain. Get ready for the spring rain. What does that mean? That means that that new refreshing for the new thing to spring forth, because remember, it might be some cleansing for the new thing. The autumn rain is closing out the old thing. What if you need some cleansing for the new thing? What if you about to meet somebody that's gonna change your life and God has to cleanse your mind of old thought patterns? Thought patterns like this, like <clears throat> I'm not worthy or maybe I'm a pretender or maybe I can't really do this. What if you think that way? You can't think that way when you get ready to walk in a blessing. When I was in school, one of my voice teachers uh, taught us how to come on stage. She said, whenever you walk on stage, you don't just walk on the stage when you're about to sing. She said, you take the stage. She said, you walk out there like this stage is mine, because it is. You got the floor. You don't walk out there apologetically. You walk out there like I'm about to say what I got to say in this song, and you walk out and you take the stage. You see that? Now, <clears throat> in some situations, in some blessings, that's how you have to walk into the room, like you taking the stage. You can't do that if you got low self-esteem. You can't do that if your mind is still full of doubt and unbelief. You can't do that if you're still thinking that you're, you're some kind of poser, okay, that you're some kind of pretender. See what I mean? Uh, nobody that won an Olympic gold medal won it without confidence. I'm gonna say that one more time. There's nobody that ever won an Olympic gold medal that won it without confidence. Just think about that. Think about that. Nobody hit the peak and the top of their sport without confidence. Didn't happen. Everybody that hit a gold medal went out there with confidence and gave it the best shot they had. You see that? So sometimes God got to cleanse your mind of that old, low level, low self-esteem, doubting yourself, that kind of thing. That got to go. So sometimes God goes in spring rain so you can spring into the next thing with the right mindset. Let me get to this other scripture, okay, before we wrap up. Other scripture I wanna give you is a very familiar scripture, and we're gonna see some new things in it by the Holy Ghost. Joel 2 and 25, I'll put that on the screen, Joel 2 and 25. Those of you that read scriptures are very familiar with this one. Some of y'all, this might be the first time you're hearing it. I'm gonna read it in several versions, Joel, book of Joel, Old Testament 2 and 25. NIV, New International Version, I will repay you for the years the locusts have eaten, the great locusts and the young locusts, the other locusts and the locust swarm, my great army that I sent among you. New Living Translation. 
The Lord says, I will give you back what you lost to the swarming locusts, the hopping locusts, the stripping locusts, and the cutting locusts. It was I who sent this great destroying army against you. King James, and I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you. Uh, Berean Study Bible, I will repay you for the years eaten by locusts, the swarming locusts, the young locusts, the destroying locusts, and the devouring locusts, my great army that I sent against you. Now, how is that relevant to what we're talking about now? I'll show you, I'll tell you what that means. Very briefly, the Bible is telling you when God says he will repay for the years eaten by locusts. And then he goes into the kinds of locusts. The New Living says swarming locusts, hopping locusts, stripping locusts, and cutting locusts. Sometimes when things come in your life, they swarm, they hop, they strip, and they cut. When uh, you're dealing with swarming locusts, you feel overwhelmed. When you're dealing with hopping locusts, it looks like trouble is jumping up all around you all the time. When you deal with stripping locusts, they do just what it sounds like. They strip the trees, they strip the plants, they strip uh, everything of life in front of them. And the cutting locusts, they cut. But God said that his, that's his great army that he sends among us. Now, in that context, sometimes when we get over into disobedience, then God sends judgment. <laughs> and you don't prosper, you don't go forward, because you weren't doing what the Lord said do. Okay? And when you weren't doing what the Lord said do, he's got to send something in your life to get you back on track. And so sometimes what ends up happening is you thought you were supposed to be doing a certain thing or you, were, you thought you were supposed to be doing a, a certain thing a certain way or you thought a whole bunch of stuff and all that what you thought is wrong. <laughs> so some stuff came in your life that just stripped all that away. And that's what helped you get back on track. Why is that important? Why is stuff like that from God? Because the Bible says my great army which I said against you. Why stuff like that from God? I'll tell you why. Because there are some things we would have never done without the locusts. There are some things we would have never done without the trouble. If that person hadn't left you, you'd still be with them. That person wasn't good for your life. It wasn't good for your self-esteem. They weren't good for your body. They weren't good for your mind, but you loved them with all you had. You never would have let go if there weren't any locusts. Think about it. Some of y'all hurt because somebody cheated on you. I stopped by to tell you, sooner is better than later. What do you mean, Prophet Taylor, sooner is better than later? I'll tell you what I mean. I mean, you want to know early in the relationship if they're not going to be faithful. Why would you marry somebody, <laughs> why would you marry somebody that's already showed you they're not going to be faithful? I know you got hurt when they cheated, okay? That's a locust. That locust cut. That's good. That's some good pain. Why is it good pain? Because if they weren't going to be faithful, God saved you 20 years worth of hurt by showing you. Then people are going to cheat on you. See? And so sometimes we don't know what to do with that kind of season. It's because sometimes you're in the wrong place. When you read the story of Ruth, Ruth had to go to the right field. It's only because she was in the field of Boaz doing what she was supposed to do that Boaz noticed her. What if she had been somewhere else? She would have missed that whole thing. Boaz would have never noticed her. So sometimes trouble comes in your life. Sometimes these locusts come and they come to get you. You might not be in the will of God, but you need to get back in the will of God. You need to get back and start doing the right thing. So sometimes the wrong thing has to be stripped. But God is saying, see, because God is gracious. God is saying, even if you lost years to the wrong thing, I'm going to repay you for them years. What does that look like? Very rarely do people explain what that looks like. I've heard people quote the scripture my whole life. Um, my sister said, what if they pass? If they pass, then God can send you a new source of whatever they brought you, okay? Because you can't ever replace somebody that died. Ain't nobody ever gonna be them. That's even true like with a dog. You can't replace a dog. That, if you're a dog lover, once your dog dies, ain't nothing ever going to be like that, especially if it's the dog you grew up with. That's once in a lifetime. But you can love again. God can send you a new source of that thing that was stripped away because you can't replace the person. But if there's a function that they brought into your life, friendship, love, money, protection, wisdom, and counsel, there can be a new source of that because you ain't never going to be able to replace them. 
But sometimes what God also gives you, hear me carefully, is wisdom, Lord have mercy. Every time we talk about the scripture, we talk about it like everything is gonna be a windfall. When God said he'll restore to you the years, God might give you wisdom to multiply like LeBron James. Like God might, before, you might not have known what to do with $5, so you just ate it up. Now you might have enough wisdom to find yourself a good investment and that $5 can turn into $5,000 because now you know what to do with it. Can you see that? So when God says he'll repay, it can come in a variety of ways. It doesn't all have to look the same, but whatever was missing, whatever was stripped away by the locusts, whatever you know, you lost in the years, God said he's going to give it back. Now, another thing, now you can have to use your faith on this one. God can give you more efficient days. What do I mean by more efficient days? God can cause you to get more done in 24 hours than you could get done just in your own strength. I'm a living witness. I'm a living witness because time is not a limitation of God. So what that means is like if, if God is, is, if you're in a restoration period and God is repaying you for something, then you can get up with your plan and get stuff going. And God can cause so much to happen in that 24 hour period. It can catapult you into something. And you can be someplace where normally it might have taken you years to get there. And you get there with one conversation, one relationship, one mentor, one day, one right decision, one investment, one conversation. You see what I mean? So, so that's what I'm saying. You don't want to limit the way the Lord repays, but you want to believe that he can repay because God can even do more with time. Don't try to figure that out with your mind. Stop limiting God to what you can understand. You can't fit God in your brain. Your brain is not where God gave you to deal with him. God gave you your spirit, that, the breath of life inside of you. That's where the Holy Ghost lives. So stop trying to filter God through your brain. You can't get God in this. That's not possible. You cannot fit the almighty in your little human brain. It's not going to happen. So stop trying to understand God through your brain. We understand God by faith, meaning we believe what he says. Okay. Is there a bigger message when the locust strikes? Sometimes there are, sis. Sometimes there is a bigger message. And that's why you have to seek the Lord and sometimes get a prophetic word. Sometimes you have to ask God, why is this happening? Um, and that's what I meant when I said earlier about discerning the seasons. Discerning the seasons. You have to ask the Lord, what is going on in my life and why is it happening? Understand? Okay. And this is my great army that I sit among you. But God says, I will repay you for the years. And so going again back to the title of the, today's prophetic word is it's time to collect. It's time to collect. So what that means in a practical sense is that some people that are listening to this message right now, that all that stuff you've been through, God is about to give you that spring rain and some new stuff going to spring forth. And God's going to pay you back for all the missing years. So I'm going to say this last little bit, and then I'm going to be through. You would say, well, if that's the case, Prophet Taylor, then why did it happen? And the answer to that question is, it's different for different people, and it's different for different reasons. Remember that people are not a one-size-fits-all kind of thing, and that's why you have to have your own relationship with God. Sometimes things happen because they just happen. Sometimes things happen because we live on a sin-cursed earth. Sometimes things happen because there was stuff you doing wrong, you were doing wrong and it came to a head. Sometimes things happen because you was doing the right thing in the wrong place. Sometimes things happen because you're doing the wrong thing in the right place. Sometimes things happen because you were done with something, except you didn't know you were done. Sometimes things happen because something was done with you and you didn't know it was done with you. And sometimes things happen because the devil was waiting for you somewhere and God saw you about to walk somewhere where Satan was, and you couldn't see where Satan was. So God sent some trouble to get you off that path. And you kept fighting and fighting and fighting. No matter what you did, you couldn't make that door open. That's because there was some trouble down that path that you couldn't see. And God was trying to stop you from heading right into a trap of the devil. Okay? So this is why I keep trying to tell you that you have to know the Lord for yourself. You have to walk in the prophetic 
for yourself, you have to uh, be able to get a word from God for yourself, okay? Because there's not going to be a one-size-fits-all answer, okay? There's not going to be a one-size-fits-all answer. People keep, you know, thinking that, you know, that there's going to be this one-size-fits-all thing, and no, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. Okay? It's going to be whatever's going on in your life. It's going to be whatever is happening in your life. Okay? It's going to be whatever God is trying to teach you. It's going to be whatever it is that you need to learn. It's going to be whatever. Remember I talked in the beginning about the fallow ground and all that? It's going to be Whatever that is for you, that's individual. That's not going to <laughs> that's not going to happen on a corporate basis. Why is that so important? I'll tell you why that's important. It's important because you can't look at somebody else's blessing and somebody else's season and say, why ain't that happening in my life? Because the answer to that question might be. That is not time for that to happen in your life. That's the thing. It might be time for that to happen in their lives. It does not mean it's time for that to happen in your life. It doesn't mean it's not gonna happen. It just means it's not your season. So that's why I keep telling you all the time that God is a person, not a set of rules. God is a person. That's why we're, that's why we have personality. That's why you're a person, because we're made in his image. And just like if you have multiple children, all your children ain't going to be in the same stage of life at the same time. You can have newborns, toddlers, uh, elementary school kids, uh, tweens, teenagers, all at the same time if you got enough kids. All them children ain't in the same stage of life. Your nine-year-old going to be talking about, why you let my brother drive the car? Because your brother's 16. Why can't I drive the car, daddy? Because you nine. That's why. Well, your daughter might talk about, well, you let my brother go out. How come I can't go out? Because your brother's 17. You 12. Ain't no 12-year-old girl got no business going out with no 17-year-old boys. That's why you ain't going. Okay? And your kids will pout and throw a tantrum and do whatever. And I know we do the same thing to the Lord because the Lord tells us that we're his children. The Bible never says that we are the adults of God. <laughs> Did you notice the Bible never calls us adults of God? <laughs> Bible calls us children of God. So I know we do the same thing to the Lord. So what that means is that if some, see, because if somebody else has matured to the point where they can handle that next thing, it doesn't mean it's not coming for you. Maybe it means it's just not your season for that. That's why you can't compare where you are to other people. That's hard for us as people. That's hard. That's hard. That never goes away, by the way. People keep talking about like just kids do that. No, everybody does that. I don't care what field you're in. I see people in ministry do it all the time. If somebody graduates to another level and they went from pastoring 300 to 3,000, or they went from pastoring 3,000 to 30,000, like, like Joel Osteen, all of a sudden you walk into a church and it's tens of thousands of people listening to you every week. Everybody can't handle that. Everybody's not going to get that. Everybody's not going to get that at the same time. Some people aren't going to get that at all. Remember, the Lord said he gives out stuff according to every man's several ability. That's the way the kingdom of God works. So that's why you can't compare yourself to other people. But that's hard. That's hard. That's hard. I know that's hard. I know if you want to get married and you see other people getting married and it's not happening for you. I know that get on your last nerve. I know that get on your reserve nerve. I know it does. I know that whatever it is you're looking at, if other people are getting it, you want to kind of throw a tantrum and poke your lips out and say, you know, well, God, when is it my turn? It's going to be your turn when it's your season. It's individual. I can't stress that enough. So that's why, see, I'm trying to counter all that bad teaching. Because think about this. When we teach academically, we divide people up into grade levels. Because you can't teach kindergartners with fifth graders. Isn't that a ridiculous concept? You can't teach fourth graders with seniors in high school, 
What it look like you in fourth grade and then the se seniors in high school? Can, can you see that we don't do that academically? But sometimes in church, we do it like that. Sometimes in church, when you preach your congregation, you preach to a whole bunch of people that are different places in their life. And so sometimes you can make the mistake of thinking that because it's somebody else's season for this thing, that maybe God has forgotten you. That's not the truth. What is the truth is that this is an individual journey. This is an individual walk. This is an individual thing. You understand? So that's why you have to have your own relationship with God. So the prophetic word for today is that it's time to collect. You're not supposed to go from season to season to season to season and never get no harvest, never. Because <laughs> I start by to tell you, people teach on the extremes. Some people teach poverty and bearing your cross and being on, you know, underneath and climbing the rough side of the mountain, none of which is in the Bible, by the way. That's old school black people slavery stuff. That's not in the scripture, by the way. But, and then some people preach, you know, just prosperity and I'm just happy all the time. I'm good. Well, you can be above only not beneath like the scripture says, if you have developed a habit of doing absolutely everything the Lord tells you to do. Because the Bible teaches that the only way to be above only and not beneath, to be the head not to hell and head and not to tail and never be beneath, is you're obedient in all things all the time, over time. So if you're there, then praise God for you. Then your life is, you know, everything's hunky-dory, great. But if you ain't there, you got to get there. You got to step your way up there. You see that? But people tend to preach to the extremes. Like when people say things like, God said you're the head not to tail. That's not what the scripture says. Scripture says, if you listen to the Lord and hearken to his voice and observe to do everything he commands you to do and don't turn to the right or the left to grab the other gods to serve him, then all these blessings come upon you. That's what the scripture actually teaches. But all these people have been out there teaching you that you can just do whatever. And that's why people get confused because it's what I've been saying during this whole lesson. They don't understand that sometimes you got to have seasons of locusts. And sometimes you got to have that late rain and early rain. And sometimes you got to have seasons where God is scooping out the best, see what I mean? See what I mean? All right, so, but for somebody listening to me, it's time to collect. Hold on, I feel a prophetic word coming. For behold, says the Lord, it is indeed time for some of you to collect. I need you to trust me for the harvest you're gonna reap doesn't look like what you thought it was gonna reap. It is indeed greater and broader. It has far more reaching implications than you could ever believe or understand. So trust me to take you into the new dimension. Trust me to gather your grain, your wine, and your oil, for I am true to my word. I am equal to my word. I will not fail my word, but rather believe me and trust me so you can reap every good thing I've given you. And never forget, not all of it is going to come in the package that you thought. So do not walk by sight. Do not discern with your natural eye, but rather trust me. Ask me. Ask of the Holy Spirit that I might give you wisdom and insight and vision so you can discern what is from me and what is not from me, what is yours and what is not yours, says the Spirit of the living God. Wow, okay, that word blessed my heart. I don't know if anybody else needed to hear that. I need to hear that. That was deep. That's why I tell you all the time. I'm gonna say this last little bit and then I'm gonna sign off. <clears throat> There's always arguments both from saints and sinners about prophets and false prophets and how come some people hit and some people miss and some people this and some people that okay the word to prophesy <laughs> means to speak by divinely inspired utterance in other words it means it's something that the holy ghost is saying it's not something you're saying the spirit of god is saying it through you and to you but it's actually him saying it that's what to prophesy means. It means to speak by divinely inspired utterance. It means the Holy Ghost is doing the talking. It might be coming out of your mouth, but it's the Holy Ghost saying it. Which is why you hear me say all the time, if the Holy Ghost ain't saying nothing, I ain't saying nothing. I'm just a man. I'm just a person just like you. I want to hear from the Spirit of God. It's only when he says something that is going to come to pass. It's only when you speak by the Holy Ghost by the Holy Ghost. That's what to prophesy means, to speak by the utterance of the Holy Spirit of God, not yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you 
You know, some people ain't prophesying, they prophesying. <laughs> They're not testifying, they test the lie. Okay. The Holy Ghost has to speak, not you. You're the vehicle. You understand that? And it's very easy sometimes to get presumptuous and start thinking that you can make God say something. You can just make up stuff, a whole bunch of stuff. And that's why I pray before I prophesy. I want the Holy Ghost to speak. Not me. I'm just a person just like you. You see that? And so that's why you got to learn how to discern through the spirit. The Holy Ghost is the only one that has all information, can see all the hearts, see the future, see the people, see the stock market. See, the Holy Ghost is the only one that knows that. That's why you have to have your relationship with him. You see that? You have to have your relationship with him, your relationship, and your relationship with him is your relationship with him. And remember, we always have the scripture. That's why we have a Bible. The scripture is the sure word of prophecy. What that means is that like what the Holy Ghost just said through my mouth, God is equal to his word. So if the Lord said he's going to repay the years and the Lord said we can gather the grain and the wine and oil, then we can. But the Lord also said that prophetic word we just received that not all of it's going to look like what you thought and like is bigger than you can imagine. Because that's always God. He's always doing something. I told you, stop trying to fit him in this. You can't fit the almighty in this. You can't, you no, know, you can't process God through this right here. You're wasting your time. You're about to bust a brain cell trying to figure God out. You can't figure God out. God had never asked you to figure him out. God asked you to believe him. One more time. God had never asked you to figure him out. God asked you to believe him. He asked you to believe him. Okay? And based on that word he just said, it's bigger than we thought. It's more implications going around it than we thought. It's not all going to look like what we thought. And that last thing the Holy Ghost said, we're going to have to develop our spiritual discernment. Because some stuff going to come, it's going to look like an opportunity, but that might not be from the Lord. Only the Holy Ghost can tell you that. Only the Holy Ghost can tell you what the Father and Son are saying. Can't nobody tell you what Father God is saying and what Jesus is saying, except the Holy Ghost. Some people run around here, you're chasing after people. You, you just trying to be a spiritual groupie. Oh yeah, I said it, I meant it, and I'm here to represent it. Some folks are spiritual groupies. You chasing people, popular people, big names, fame, whatever. That's just a groupie, okay? You need to be asking the Holy, Holy Ghost is in you, okay? He's the one that helps us discern. Is this from God? Is this not from God? Is this person from God? Is this person not from God? What season is it? What am I supposed to do now? That kind of thing. See, I'm fired up. This bless my soul. I'm going to watch this just to edify my own soul because it blessed my heart. All right. So, <clears throat> so that's our prophetic word for the day. If you have a prayer request, put it on the screen because uh, I know it's Valentine's Day. So happy, happy Valentine's Day to everybody that's in love and want to be in love and wish you was in love. Uh, but if you got a prayer request, put it on the screen so I can pray for it. Now, remember, I told you my goal for uh, this year is to increase my reach. And so with every video that I do, I'm going to ask you to help me do one thing because I cannot increase my reach by myself. So I'm going to ask you to help me do one thing. And the one thing I'm going to ask you to do today is get a prophetic devotional. And I'm going to put that link on the screen. Get a prophetic devotional. Why is that important? That's important so you can develop your own prophetic. Okay, I keep trying to tell people, I keep trying to tell people, I keep trying to tell people, you need to have your own prophetic walk with God. You need to have your own prophetic walk with God. You need to have your own prophetic walk, walk with God. So um, I've written four prophetic devotions, one per quarter, so that each day you can meditate on a different prophetic scripture, something a prophet said, a word of prophecy. Uh, uh, <clears throat> let me see. I think I lost that. Uh, a word of prophecy, God dealing with somebody. Okay, super prayer request. All right.
I'm going to pray for Lisa's prayer request. So I put the link in the chat for my daily prophetic devotional quarter one with the writing page so you can take notes when the Holy Ghost begins to speak to you. So let me pray for Lisa. Lord, I come to you for right now, thanking you for uh, Lisa's prayer request, oh God, that she needs a spirit of wisdom in this chapter of life and the opportunities, doors are opening. So I ask you to give Lisa, oh God, a spirit of discernment so that she can tell which opportunity is from you and which opportunity is not. So she can tell which opportunity is gonna bless her and give her increase and bless her life, and which opportunity is not. Also, oh God, I pray that you give her a discernment between the better and the best. Because some things might come and they might be better than what she thought, but don't let her sacrifice the best for the better. Because if you've got something, God, you always start with the best and end with the best. So help Lisa discern the best in the situation, oh God. Best people, best opportunities, best situations, best connections that are from you so she can be the head and not the tail in everything that she does. And I thank you for it. I believe you for it. I release it to you prophetically, Lisa. Receive it, believe it, and walk in it. And the Spirit of God will answer you and give you this wisdom and discernment as you seek him and ask him. In Jesus' name, we pray, believe it, and declare it. Okay, Brother Nguyen Henry, please pray for my right foot to be healed. In the name of Jesus, I speak to that right foot of Brother Henry, and I say that by Jesus' stripes, you are healed. You are 100% whole. I command the ligaments, joints, tendon, tendons, uh, arteries, veins, the skin, everything to come together and be 100% whole because by his stripes, we were already healed. Jesus already took the punishment because the scripture says, surely he has borne our grief and carried our sorrows, okay? And the chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes, we are healed. So you don't have to bear that sick foot. So I command that right foot to be 100% whole. You can put weight on it, okay? Like nothing ever happened. And then also for wisdom and understanding for Brother Henry that he might be able to discern the season of God for his life, the will of God for his life, and which way to turn as God leads you from situation to situation and chapter to chapter. Amen and amen. All right. So, yeah, so don't forget to check out my prophetic devotional. Now, if you want to bless my uh, prophetic ministry, if this many has been a blessing to you, please consider uh, blessing, sowing into this ministry. I'll put my uh, Zelle out there. It's my personal email address. Uh, so if you want to bless me financially, you can send it to that Zelle uh, because it just helps me do more. It helps me make, make more books, make more music. I'm coming out with some more gospel music this year. It just helps me do more in the ministry. So if you want to bless me financially, you send that directly to my Zelle. Thanks so much. I prefer Zelle rather than Cash App because Cash App and a lot of other apps have fees. But when you use Zelle, there's actually no fee. So there's no fee for you to send it and no fee for me to receive it. So that's why I switched over to using Zelle because that's just a better vehicle. Okay. All right. Amen and amen. God bless. This has been a blessing to me. Praise God. I'm always glad, happy to be used by God. And uh, because it's an honor and a privilege because God don't need us. <laughs> hmm. So God gives us an opportunity to serve him, but he certainly does not need us. So I praise God for every chance he uses me. So God bless. Happy Valentine's Day. Enjoy, enjoy your day with your loved one. If you don't have a loved one, then you be your loved one. Love you. You're just as worthy of loving yourself as you wanted somebody else to love you. So enjoy your Valentine's Day and uh, go back and watch this from the beginning so we can get all the principles and all the teaching, all the prayers and all the prophetic words, and then pick up my quarterly prophetic devotional. And then bless me financially if you want. Okay. All right. Amen. God bless. Uh, I will see you next Sunday, same time, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time for the next weekly live prophetic word. God bless.